Now, next, I would like to introduce to you the 2014 Goi Peace Award Laureate. The presenter will be Professor Akito Arima, Chairman of Japan Science Foundation and member of the Goi Peace Award Selection Committee. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for introduction. The 2014 Goi Peace uh, Award, Dr. Kazuo Inamori. The Goi Peace Award is presented to honor research and activities to honor individuals and organizations in various fields such as education, science, culture, and art, and made outstanding contributions towards the realization of a peaceful and harmonious world for all life on Earth, sharing the same vision as the Hawaii Peace Foundation's Declaration for All Life on Earth. The 2014 Goi Peace Award will be bestowed as a result of a strict and fair selection by the members of the selection committee to Dr. Kazuo Inamori, Chairman Emeritus of Kyocera Corporation and President of Inamori Foundation. Dr. Inamori graduated from Kagoshima University in 1955 with a Bachelor of Engineering degree and joined an insulated manufacturing company in Kyoto. In 1959, he established the Kyoto Ceramic Company Limited, the present Kyocera Corporation, with an investment of 3 million yen from acquaintances. When Japan's telecommunications industry was deregulated in 1984, he quickly took the initiative to establish DDI Corporation and became its chairman. In the year 2000, DDI merged with KDD and Ido to create KDDI Corporation where he now serves as the honorary advisor. He also became chairman of Japan Airlines in 2010 after the bankruptcy of the company and was successful in reconstructing the company only three years. In 1984, he made a personal endowment to establish Inamori Foundation. At the same time, he created the Kyoto Prize, an international award, presented to recognize individuals and groups worldwide who made outstanding contributions to science, civilization, and mental spiritual development. His volunteer service includes leading Seiwai Juku, a private management school operating in 70 locations, including foreign countries, with more than 9,000 young business owners and entrepreneurs uh, to raise sensible business leaders for the future. So Dr. Inamori was very active as a major business leader in Japan. But his capacity was not limited only to pursue profit but he placed importance on developing the human nature of employees through labor. He has been talking about the importance of contributing to the development of a human society and about the social obligation of companies. Based on his strong belief that people have no higher calling than to strive for a greater good of humankind and society, Based on a thorough spirit of altruism, he has greatly contributed to the broad society. So the Goi Peace Foundation is offered to honor his achievements to contribute to the creation of the future civilization coexisting with nature and economy and society based on the new ethics, this importance of the spiritual aspect of mankind. 
So, as a member of the selection committee, I have introduced Dr. Inamori. Thank you very much. Now, we would like to move to the award ceremony. The laureate of 2014, a Goi Peace Prize. On his behalf, we have here with us Mr. Masar Inoue, head of Tokyo Office, Kyocera Corporation. The presenter of the award is Mrs. Masami Sayonji, chairperson of the Goi Peace Foundation. Please, Mrs. Sayonji. Goi Peace Award, Dr. Kazuo Inamori. You have taught about the importance of coexistence and the spirit of altruism as a business management and based on a strong belief that people have no higher calling than to strive for the greater good of humankind and society. You have pursued your way of living and also through your activities that you established in your foundation, you have contributed to the deepening of the mental or spiritual aspect of mankind and the development of science and civilization, and you have endeavored in developing future sensible business leaders. And based on the spirit of selflessness, you have endeavored in social enlightenment and educational activities. So this prize is honored uh, for your achievements contributing to the development of a future civilization in coexistence with nature and development of economy and society based on the new sense of ethics. December 11, 2014, the Goi Peace Foundation Chairperson Masami Sayonji and President Hiro Sayonji. Congratulations. Mr. Inoue, thank you very much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the community address prepared by Dr. Kazuo Inamori will be recited. Chairperson, Mrs. Masami Sayonji, President Mr. Hiro Sayonji, with the gracious presence of you, this is a great honor to be awarded the 2014 Goi Peace Foundation Prize. When there are so many people across the world who are contributing to global peace, I am extremely humbled that I have been selected to receive this honorable award. I have always been deeply impressed and extremely respectful of the activities of the Goi Peace Foundation, particularly the spirit and thought of the founder and the thought of the religious philosopher, the late Mr. Masahisa Goi's prayer, may peace prevail on earth. Regarding this massive global campaign, I was really moved. There are many words of 
of prayer all over the world, but this particular message is observed on the corners of the roads and streets across the world. May peace prevail on earth. I can think of no other word that is more love and thoughts, more than any elegant or eloquent word. Offering the sincerest prayer is the most noble conduct. Ever since I was young, that has been my belief, and therefore, as a management of the company, I have always tried to think about for everybody else, for the community, and for the good of the others. I have encouraged myself to manage the company based on the spirit of altruism, as was introduced in 1959 at the age of 27. Together with like-minded seven members, I started the company Cure Sera Corporation. Establishing a new company is exactly like going out into the raging ocean in a tiny boat without a compass. In that circumstance, what I could believe in was only the spiritual tie and the bond with my members. In order to strengthen our bonds and ties and ability, before establishment, we prepared a declaration document. It mentioned we were working unity and solidarity and work for the society and for the other people. Here we stamp our seal of blood. That was our document, and we did pray together that we will do so with our seal of blood. This is not for the private interest of the management, but this is in interest of all the stakeholders around the company and for all the company, the, and for all the society, the company is established and to contribute to all the other people and for the society. This was the lofty ideal, but we were very young engineers, only at the age of 27, but we were proud to announce our determination with our fingers prints by blood. We had no capital. We started like a little factory, but Kyocera grew rapidly. At this moment, the sales is more than 1.4 trillion yen. It has grown into one of the leading electronics manufacturer of Japan, but this is based on the purest thought of ourselves back then. After that, in 1984, at the age of 52, I started the DDI Corporation, which is now KDDI. Again, behind that, there was the pure thought of for the society, for the other. The pure thought was the driver of success. At that time, in Japan, there was one single monopolistic state-owned telecommunications company, and because of the monopoly, the tariff was extremely expensive. If I entered the market, I was thinking if the telecommunication tariff that the the population were paying uh, could be reduced. That was the reason of starting the company. At that time, the Kyocera Corporation was still small. Challenging a giant state-owned company was considered reckless. No company could do that. The monopoly has a sale of 4 trillion yen. Ever since the Meiji era, using government money, they have installed telephone lines to all the houses in Japan. It is a giant. It is not possible to challenge. All other parties were extremely hesitant. That was an area no one ventured to step in. But I thought that this is for the Japanese people. The telecom charges, the tariff must be reduced. That was my noble cause. I had no experience, no knowledge, but I decided that I will do it. However, I did not make my determination public soon. For about half a year before, actually starting my activities, I asked myself, do you have a pure motivation? Are you not thinking selfishly? I continued to ask myself constantly, what is the reason that you want to enter the telecom market? What is your motivation? Is there any stain? Is it perfectly pure? Don't you have a selfish feeling that you just want to make yourself look good to the society? 
day and night. I interrogated myself, and eventually, after all of those questioning, I decided that I have a pure motivation. It was not selfish, and in a rapid way, I decided to enter the telecom business. All the employees of DDI understood and shared the pure spirit that this is not, not for the interest of themselves, that this business was for the society and for everybody else. All the employees worked extremely hard in order to make this business successful. Because of this pure motivation and the tremendous effort, and of course, with the support of all the stakeholders, uh, we enjoyed the support of extensive customers. And today, KDDI has AU, the mobile business, and the sales of 4.3 trillion yen is raised. It has now grown into a massive corporation. There is one more example. When I was 78 years old, from 2010, for about three years, I was engaged in the restructuring of Japan Airlines, JAL. The reason why I accepted this uh, business opportunity about JAL is, one, for the restructuring of the Japanese business, two, to protect the employment of the workers of Japan Airlines, and three, for the convenience of the passengers who wish to travel. I I thought there were three worthwhile noble causes. I was chivalrous. I was almost knightly. And I thought I was a hero. Before becoming 80, I decided to become the chairman of JAL without any compensation payment. I was determined to do my utmost to reward the company. I tried to appeal to the workers of Japan Airlines about the three noble causes. The workers started to understand that the rebuilding of Japan Airlines is not only about their work, that there were other causes for the world and society. It is for the world, for the society, for the others. They started to understand and they spared no effort in cooperation. As each and every employee's mind and heart started to change to the better that this is for the world and for the community and for the people, uh, the performance of Japan Airlines improved rapidly. In the first year of restructuring, a record high operating profit of 180 billion yen. In year two, another record high of above 200 billion yen of operating profit realized, and we were relisted on the stock exchange. In the year ending March 2013, the operating profit was 190 billion yen. In the year ending March 2014, operating profit was 160 billion yen. The margin in the airline industry tends to be low, but the company is maintaining a high margin of above 10 percent. As I have mentioned, in Kyocera or in KDDI or in Japan Airlines, I always had the pure thought for the people, for the society, and the spirit of altruism, I believe, was a driving force for the development of the business. Some people may argue that you cannot manage a company with altruism, and business management is all about egoism. It is true that there are such business managers, but management based on egoism will not be able to continue with a success for a long time. If egoistic ambition grows boundlessly, that will lead to failure and that person will fall. On the other hand, if a management is based on altruism, thinking about the good of others, you will have cooperation of other people, and you'll be able to have a development beyond your abilities and will continue to prosper. I believe that this applies not only to businesses, but I think this is important to build a human society with, which is sustainable and and peaceful. The material civilization of present day, starting from industrial revolution, developed with the driving force of an egocentric ambition that you want to be richer and you want to have a more convenient society. And this strong feeling is true that created the present material civilization of a short time of only a little more than two centuries 
countries, the thing the long history of mankind, but civilization driven by one's selfish greed will not continue. For example, according to the United Nations, by 2050, the world population will be nearly 10 billion. So this massive amount of 10 billion, everyone wants to have a luxurious and affluent and convenient life. However, even now, with a population of 7 billion, it's already beyond the capacity of the Earth. Is it possible to secure the minimum necessities to live, such as food, water, and resources and energy for 10 billion people, letting aside an affluent life? It is not only about food or energy, environmental problems, regional conflict, confrontation between states or religions. Almost all of the crises of modern civilization starts from our selfish greed. However, no matter how much Mankind will wish for a more convenient and affluent life driven by greed. It's, it is clear that we can develop only within the range of Earth's capacity, and that limitation is not something far away. I'm concerned that if this continues, the present civilization will collapse sooner or later, and mankind will be ruined. In case of the great ancient civilizations which prospered in the past created by mankind now exists in front of us as ruins. Why is it that such advanced civilizations disappeared? These ruins are warnings to us towards our modern civilization. Then what kind of civilization should we aim for? I think that the spirit of altruism, thinking about the good of others, will be the spiritual norm of mankind in the future. I think that mankind should establish a civilization based on the spirit of altruism. From a civilization based on greed, and egoism to a civilization based on altruism. I believe this is an urgent task in front of us. And the key for that is our way of thinking that we have in our minds. By being based on altruism, the current international relations based on tension and national interest competition will move towards a rapprochement, and I believe it is possible to prevent international conflict and events that is caused through competitions for food and energy. All living beings can care about each other, help each other, and coexist. This is the new altruistic civilization. This may sound difficult to achieve, but with our wisdom and strength, I'm sure we can realize. At the same time, this new altruistic civilization, I'm sure, will be much more sophisticated and fertile as a spiritual civilization compared to the material civilization based on um, selfish greed that we developed during the last 200 years. And with that, I think that we can realize a world with peace prevailing on Earth. Lastly, I want to thank you all for preparing this award ceremony for me and having so many participation. I want to thank again all of you for this award, and I'd like to express my deepest respect to all of you and all the members of the Goi Peace Foundation for leading the pioneering efforts to develop a peace society. I would like to close by wishing for the further development of the foundation and also wishing for the broadening of the prayer for the peace. Thank you very much.